Let's create a menu for our pedestal block entity. Even more topics available in the 121 Minecraft modding courses. Now with energy and fluid handling for block entities next to many other awesome topics. All right, we found the back and the other ones more. And in this tutorial, we'll be adding a menu to our pedestal block entity. In two tutorials back, we added the pedestal block entity being able to be right clicked and we then save an item on it. And then last tutorial, we added the block entity renderer to it. And now we're also going to make it so that it can open in a menu when you actually crouch right click it. But for this, we need to change the block entity a tiny bit and then also add a screen and a menu. And I'll explain how those all fit together once we get there. First of all, in the block entity class itself, we're going to implement the menu provider interface which needs us to implement two methods over here. As you can see, the display name method and the create menu method. For the display name method, we're just going to make a literal component over here. We're going to call this the pedestal, but of course written correctly. There we go. And in the create menu method, we're going to make a deliberate error as we can't create the menu yet because we haven't created it yet. And in interesting enough, those two methods are the only ones we need. I personally will just put them above the get update packet and the get update tag method. That's just a personal preference of mine. I like to have the, you know, the synchronization methods at the very bottom of a class, but you don't necessarily have to. In this case, these two methods are actually the only things we need in the block entity to change here. And then it is time to get to the menu and the screen. For this, in the tutorial mod package, we're going to make a new package called screen. And in there, we'll have a couple of new Java classes. The first one is the mod menu types class. Then in the screen package, again, a new package called custom. And inside of there, we'll have two new Java classes, the pedestal menu class, as well as the pedestal screen class. Now, why is this, you know, like many different things over here? We have a menu, we have a, we have a screen. What is all of this craziness? Well, the idea is as follows. The screen is literally basically just the image that is going to be displayed. So the image of the GUI that is being displayed, it looks kind of like this. It's going to go under resources, assets, tutorial mode, textures, I'm going to make a new folder there called GUI. Into there, another new folder called Pedestal. And then into there, we are going to copy over the GUI texture. This is going to be available to you down below, of course. It's going to be called Pedestal underscore GUI dot PNG. And the idea is the screen class is basically responsible for literally only rendering this image without anything. It is just this image, right? So you have to decouple, so to speak, the idea of, well, if my mouse hovers over this slot, I will be able to take something out of it. The screen is only responsible for this image. It would literally just display this image if there was no menu attached to it, because the menu, that is the class that adds all of the functionality to it. Let's start with the menu first, though, as this is the functionality and we'll basically see what all of this craziness is. So the pedestal menu is going to extend from the abstract container menu class. We're going to hover over this to implement the still valid and the quick move stack methods. We're going to hover over this again, create constructor matching super, and then we need to change a couple of things anyway. The first thing to change here is we will have two fields. It's going to be a public final pedestal block entity. I'm going to call this the block entity. And we're going to have a private final level. That's going to be very important that we choose net Minecraft world level over here. Very important. And that's going to be called the level. Of course, those two are going to have errors because they're both final and we have not assigned them. But no worries at all. I'm going to sign them in just a second. First of all, we're going to make the pedestal menu constructor public. And then we're going to delete the menu type over here because this is going to be, well, quite a bit different. So the first parameter is going to be the container ID. Absolutely correct. Then we're going to have an inventory. And we're going to call this the INV in this case. That's fine. And then we're also going to have a friendly byte buff. Exactly. We're going to call this the extra data in this case. To call the super, we're not actually going to call the super. We're actually going to call this passing in the container ID passing in the inventory, then passing in the inventory that player that level that get block entity and passing into the get block entity method extra data that read block position. Now you might say, what the actual frick is this? Do not worry. The idea here is as follows. When you register a menu, then we can give it extra data and the extra data we're going to give it is we're going to say, hey, the position of a block entity that we're that this menu is attached to we're going to basically give it via this extra data. Now, one issue here is that we don't have a secondary constructor that, well, works for this. So what we can do is we can hover over this and we can create this constructor right here. And as you can see, this now is a constructor that takes in a ID, an inventory, as well as a block entity. 
And now in the super, we can put in a comma and then the container ID over here because the first parameter in the super is going to be the menu type, which we'll have in the mod menu types over here when we register this. But let's first of all go through and finish the pedestal menu over here because that's going to be fine. That's a very easy thing to do. We want the block entity. Well, luckily, it is very straightforward. We simply say this block entity is equal to the block entity parameter dot cast. And we're going to cast this to a pedestal block entity. That fixes the first issue. Then this dot level is simply equal to inv dot player dot level. Awesome. And then we need two methods that generate the player inventory as well as the hotbar. Once again, let's think about this. When the screen renders this particular image, we somehow need to tell the game, hey, this is where the inventory is laid out. This is where the hotbar is laid out. That's why I'll be copying over both of these methods as they are basically always going to be the same. So you can basically double check the description below in the GitHub repository. There's everything you need. And you can see that we basically add the inventory and then add the player's hotbar. The numbers over here, those are all already calculated so that it displays in here properly. If, of course, you have a completely different GUI or GUI and you have a completely different image over here, then of course you would need to redraw this, but you will see the, let's say, whatever offset it is when you open the menu. So that should be no issues calculating that after the fact. First, we're going to call the add player inventory method. Here we go, passing in INV and then the add player hotbar, also passing in INV. Last but certainly not least, we also have, as you can see, a singular slot that we wanted to fill for our pedestal block entity. That is the item stack handler that we've defined in the block entity. And that, of course, needs to somehow be, well, translated as well. For this, we're going to say this.addSlot, making a new slot item handler, passing in this.blockEntity.inventory. So this is the item handler that is associated with this. So we're basically saying, hey, the inventory of our block entity is what we're going to use. We're going to say index is zero because this is the, the first slot, right? The slot with index zero. It is situated at 80 and 35. I might ask, where does 80 and 35 come from? Well, if we look at the GUI over here, once again, we put it 00 at the top left corner, going 80 pixels to the right and 35 pixels down. And look at that. We're at the top left corner of the slot, and then it's going to fill that slot. That's literally how that happens. I also highly suggest you play around with the numbers, both with the player inventory and the hotbar, just for, for you to get a feel, okay, what is going to change here? Then we have the still valid method, which is going to call the still valid over here, this method right here with the container access. First thing is going to be container access, container level access dot create, passing in the level, passing in a block entity dot get block pause. And then after the second closing parentheses, we're going to pass in the player and then passing in mod blocks dot pedestal dot get. The block that we're passing in here has to match the block that the block entity is associated with. Otherwise, you will get an error basically. And then last but certainly not least, although uh, it is the thing that I hate the most, is the quick move stack method. Now, quick rundown on what this does. It basically enables you to shift click a something from your inventory into the inventory of the block entity and out of it again. Now, this means that there's a bunch of calculations that have to happen, right? The first, it needs to be, let's say, the first uh, free slot in your inventory. It needs to be the first free slot in that is valid in the inventory of the block entity, things like that. And that is why I have the method prepared. I'll copy over. As per usual, it is available down below. And you will say that this is a little bit crazy. Now, the idea is that this is the method. And as you can see, it also comes with a bunch of different private static fields over here. And the credit here goes out to DZ107 as per usual, as we've done, I think, in the last, like, I don't even know, eight different versions, so to speak. Um, it's been crazy. The idea is just as follows. This enables shift clicking, and this does all of the calculations. There is, however, a super important thing, and that is this one right here, TE inventory slot count. Right now, we have one inventory slot that we've defined for our custom block entity. If you have eight what do you think this number needs to be? It needs to be eight. So however many slots you have in your inventory, this needs to be changed. Super important. Don't forget this. And then the rest, you can basically just collapse this entire method because this just does all of the different calculations over here. Of course, you can go through this. You can, you know, you can go through the logic over here, but basically it just allows you to shift click an item from your inventory to the inventory of the block entity and back 
and that is it. And with that, the menu class is done. So we can now register it in the mod menu types class. So let's actually take a look at this. This is not too crazy. This is going to have a public static final. What is it? Of course, a deferred register of type menu type of type question mark. It's going to be the menus equal to deferred register dot create. It's going to be for registries dot menu. And then of course, tutorial mod dot mod ID and a public static void register method with an iEvent bus. And as per usual, I highly recommend you do go down into the description below in the GitHub repository as, you know, this is a quite a bit more involved process over here without a doubt. Uh, and then when we have the register method, let's go and call it inside of our tutorial mod constructor. So mod menu types dot register passing in the event bus. And there we have it. And then we need a helper method. It's going to be a private static. And then angle bracket t extends abstract container menu. And then this is going to be returning a deferred holder of type menu type of type question mark. And then after the first closing um, angle bracket, another menu type of type T in this case. There's going to be the register menu type method. And it's going to have a couple of parameters. That's going to be the string name parameter, as well as the I container factory of type T. I'm going to call this the factory. Looks a little crazy, but there we go. And it's going to return simply menus.register, passing in the name parameter, then making a constructor or rather a supplier of I menu type extension that create passing in the factory. Looks a little crazy, but there we have it. And yes, in theory, I'm pretty sure we can also do this in line, but it's fine. We're, we're going to be okay. And then to register it, a public static final deferred holder of type menu type of type question mark, comma, menu type of type pedestal menu. This is going to be our pedestal menu. There we go. Equal to the register menu type pedestal underscore menu for the name. And then this is going to simply be pedestal menu colon colon new. No errors should be present over here. So we can return to the menu class. And in the super call, we can say mod menu types dot pedestal menu dot get. And now both the registration is done as well as the menu over here as well. And we're only left with the screen, which is luckily quite simple. This will extend from the abstract container screen of type pedestal menu. As you can see, this is one way that this is connected with each other. We're going to implement the render BG method. We're going to hover over this to create constructor matching super. And there we go. That's going to be fine. Uh, then we need a resource location. I'm just going to quickly copy this over. As you can see, this is basically just the GUI texture. And it points to, of course, a resource location from our mod ID. So this is the tutorial mod mod ID. And then under textures, GUI, pedestal, pedestal underscore GUI, dot PNG. Do not forget the dot PNG. That is very important. Well, and then the render BG method. How does this one look? Well, it is actually quite simple. Um, well, I'm going to copy over the contents of this and then I'll explain. They are more straightforward than one might think. Uh, so here, this is, of course, GUI graphics .blit, And you can see the first three lines over here, right? Set the shader, set the shader color and set the shader texture over here. Those are always going to be the same, basically. I That's basically the whole idea. Those are always going to look like this. This basically just does a couple of things to set the, I mean, literally just set the shader, set the colors, set the texture, and that's it. And then the X and Y over here, just calculate the X and the Y so that the uh, texture knows like where to draw from. Um, here, this is the image width and the image height. Those are by default 176 times 166. Very importantly, that is the height of the image right here. So this is going to be a height of 166, right? So the, the actual GUI itself is 166 pixels high and 176 pixels wide. However, the entire image is 256 by 256. Note that there that that's the difference. And if you have this image, right? So if you, this image, let's say, was 512 by 512, then you can change that, right? So the the size of the image um, can be changed over here if I were to have this. So this is the texture width and height. This is the actual text, like the height and width of the image file, right? Versus how the whatever the the image itself is the naming scheme is not well chosen here i do believe uh, i think that they could be a little bit clearer but that's the whole idea also for the i and the y over here just so that you know what all of this stuff is i'm just gonna uh, quickly copy over the names over here this is partial ticks this is the mouse position over here uh, because that one might be interesting if you had any sort of uh, hover effects or things things like that then that would be quite important but with that, we actually have the screen more or less done. So what we can then do is simply go to our pedestal block entity, 
And inside of the create menu method, we can make a new pedestal menu, passing in I, passing in the inventory, and then passing in this over here. There we go. And that's what we want in this case. And then in the tutorial mod class, at the very bottom over here in our client mod events, we have to define or basically connect the screen as well as the menu together. And that's going to happen in the public static void register screens method. That's going to have the register menu screens event. And of course, as always, don't forget the add subscribe event annotation over here. Event that register passing in mod menu types dot pedestal menu dot get and then pedestal screen colon colon new. And there we have it. That's it. That is the menu created and connected. And now it should work. Now, one thing we don't have is the way, a way to open the menu, because right now when we right click our pedestal block over here, uh, we're just going to basically put in whatever we like, whatever item we have, and we're not actually going to open it. Well, we can change that by actually adding another if statement. So what we're going to have is inside of the first if statement, I'm going to say if the player dot is crouching. So if we're crouching and let's say the level over here is not client side. So basically, if the player is crouching and we are on the server, then what we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to say player dot cast. We're going to cast this to a server player. Well, then we're going to say open menu and we're going to open a simple menu provider, passing in the pedestal block entity, passing in component literal dot pedestal. And after the second closing parenthesis, we're going to pass in the position. There we go. And we'll also return item interaction result of success because I basically want to sort of be done with the evaluation over here. The one negative that this is going to have is that it will actually still play a sound via the client um, because, well, this only happens in the server and the client's thing is still going to go through. Regardless of that, though, uh, this will open the inventory and it will not stow an item onto the block entity when we are crouching. So this is basically the way to open an inventory. Of course, the rest over here, you know, the more complicated stuff over here, that is just specific to our own block entity. But with that done, well, let's jump into the game and see if it works. All right, finally back in Minecraft. And as you can see, our pedestals, they're all still there. However, if I crouch right click, you can see now we're opening the inventory and we can see what is in there and I can take it out and you can see it is gone from there. If I put something new in and I crouch right click again, you can see that I can basically access this. I can even shift click into it and you can see it all freaking works. Absolutely fantastic. And that is, I mean, literally exactly what we want. I don't know, man. This is super freaking cool. Of course, like I said, when it comes to block entities, it is quite an involved process, right? Just adding a menu over here, quote unquote, just adding a menu. Uh, it's still quite an involved process. And obviously, if, if there's anything more complicated than literally just one slot over here, well, then it gets more complicated, right? I don't know what else to tell you, but that is the whole idea. And that is a menu added to our block entity. Freaking awesome, man. All right, any tiny addendum over here. You might have noticed that in the pedestal screen, we didn't have any names over the items. And that is because we still have to overwrite the render method over here. And very importantly, then call this.render tooltip, passing in GUI graphics, passing in mouse X and passing in mouse Y. And by doing this, all of a sudden, it all works again. Absolutely no worries. As per usual, I highly recommend you go down to the description below into the GitHub repository as they are like, I mean, it, it is quite an involved process. And if there's anything that you might have missed, it is very easy to make like one tiny mistake, right? Maybe, you know, forget the still valid method, uh, put in a different block over here. There's all sorts of crazy things like tiny mistakes that can happen that will then not allow you to properly open the menu. So I highly re recommend you get this to work once exactly like this, and then you have a template to work off of. But that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time, we're going to make a completely new custom block entity together with a recipe type. And that's going to be quite a long tutorial. So strap in and hope to see you there. So, yeah.